My name is Miles Ross, I'm a Call of Duty Worldly commentator and international man of mystery. I was born in London, England. Um, I lived there for most of my life and we ended up living in uh, West Sussex, like rural countryside England, super, super rural, like uh, it was the English dream, you know, and it was, it was a wonderful place to grow up. The internet was terrible and my house, the house I grew up in was built in 1220. That's one, two, two, zero, like super old. It was tough to, tough to really do anything there except for play a ton of video games and it inspired a kind of hermit lifestyle. That was really where I fell in love with, with like competitive games. All I wanted to do was game and compete and I just play constantly, I wanted to be the best. And when I found a way to do that through online tournaments, through land tournaments, traveling the country, I couldn't quite share it with anyone because at the time it wasn't cool, you know? We weren't in stadiums, we weren't getting six sponsors, we weren't getting like flown around the country, we didn't have Twitch, we didn't have any of these things. It was just us in our bedrooms with a headset on, screaming up until 3 a.m. in the morning on a school night. In the weirdest possible way, gaming made me a much more sociable person than anything else I've ever done in my life. You know, it taught me to talk to people because you know, you're constantly communicating. You know, when it comes to like high paced games, you have to get so much information across and you have to be a great listener because things are happening very quickly and you need to take in all this information. And it really taught me how to converse with people and it taught me how to be a better listener, which was a super useful skill now um, as a grown man. So I got to university and all of a sudden I was like, look at all these people, you know, I am who I am. I don't have this weird thing where I'm trying to hide my gaming background or, you know, anything I'm embarrassed about or shy about, I can just be me. Here's my story. And it was so cool to be for the first time honest about that and share that. It was so, so fun. So I chased it. I kept playing. Eventually I met a girl and it all kind of dropped off. But that's kind of what happens, you know. I found another part of my life that I was excited about. And when my skills went, I stopped really playing and I told my team up front, I was like, guys, I've got to go. This is what's happening in my life. I basically just put it all down and didn't really look back. So I stopped doing that and I met this girl. And she said to me at the end of my degree, she was like, do you want to come back to Australia? And I said, yeah, why not? You know, and now Polina, she's my wife. Polina pushed me so, so hard to chase the dreams I told her about as a kid, which was being a comedian. You know, my family's always been in TV comedy. It's, it's been comedy, comedy, comedy. She gets me to do stand-up comedy in, in Australia. I'm fighting it, I'm super stubborn. I'm like, honey, I've got a job. I'm, I, I don't need to do this. What if I doesn't work out? What if I, and she's just like, shut up and do it. The phone's not worth that much. Don't try to Okay. I do my first night of stand-up comedy and it wasn't great, but it was, Definitely something that I remembered feeling like this is the person I think I am, this is the person I want to be, this is the, this is the life I want to have. You know, I learned a ton of skills. I learned how to write jokes, I learned how to prepare material, I learned how to see the world in a different way. You know, you put a really weird lens on the world when you're looking for jokes, you're seeing things differently. So I get back into the world of entertainment, I get back into stand up and I get into improv and I'm starting to really enjoy performing. And then all of a sudden I get this phone call from a guy I was commentating for in the UK. And he says, hey man, I've got this new game, I've got this studio backing it, we're gonna have this cool show, it's gonna be a great stream, can you come and commentate? And I was like, all right, cool, let's do it, why not? So I jump in and I do it. And little did I know that would be the biggest kind of catalyst to reminding me of like everything in my life that I'd been missing, I'd loved, because like life just came full circle. Being an entertainer and being a performer had taken me back in time to being a gamer. To be pulled back in like that and thrust in at this position, I didn't realize how important that was gonna be. This is the perfect marriage of like the two worlds I loved of like entertainment and video games and smash them together. And now I'm going from weekend to weekend to weekend, doing these events, doing these commentary jobs, and then I get introduced to a different game and a different game. And I was like, wow, there's so many different people out here. There's so many players. And again, that passion, I couldn't stop doing it because it's just so intoxicating, it was so much fun. Going from being a player, looking up to, you know, my gaming idols, the guys who work at MLG, sitting on my bed at 14 years old and watching these tournaments at three o'clock in the morning and like fist bumping and like super excited about that. And again, feeling that energy to now be working for that company or to even have the possibility to make that leap. I was like, I have to do this. I, I cannot say no. We go from doing these events on the weekends, 
finding a little bit, you know, finding the time to, to, to fly to different countries, to fly to these places, to eventually MLG coming to me and saying, hey man, can you make the move? Even harder now as a grown adult, even harder to move, to pack up life, to pick up, you know, everything in, into suitcases once again is such a challenge. And now my wife's life as well. And I know that doing that is gonna change her life and change her career and change everything about us. And all she kept saying was, this is your dream. You have to do this. There is nothing in the world more important right now than your dream and now's a good time. So let's do it. You know, and without her, I, I, for me, I wouldn't have done anything in life. I wouldn't have chased any kind of entertainment career. I wouldn't have made, tried to make people laugh, which is definitely my favorite thing in the world to do. You know, I wouldn't have done any of those things without her pushing me. You know, so I'm forever in her debt for everything that is good about my life. Moving to Columbus, I've got nothing. I've got my PlayStation, I have like some socks and underwear, I've got some you know jeans and a jacket that is not cut out for the cold. And I set up my everything in home and it's just me and Maven. I've got this like terrible ratchet gaming setup. It's on, you know, my PlayStation is on a chair. It's got a pot, like a cooking pot on top of a box. It's good, it works. It's fine, I'm super happy. I can even stream from it, it's great. And I'm living next to Maven. And anyone who knows Maven knows that Maven is like a force of nature, man. Like he is big, he is so loud. He is just oh, yes. the biggest force. <laughs> See, I just like, I just want meat, cheese, and hot sauce, and I'm good. Of course. I'm here in Columbus at the MLG Arena in the studio getting ready for the first two matches of Pro League tonight. You ready? Yes. My commentary style is very much about storytelling. I want to tell the story of the game. I want to tell the story of the players and the struggle that they've gone from the beginning of the match, what's happening before the match, what's happening during the match and after the match, all of that. And that not, not just the in-game, but also the out-of-game stuff, you know. And when I think of Call of Duty, when I think of video games, I think it's more than just a game. It's life. And it's very much my life. And that's what it means to me. So it's not just about what you see on the screen. It's very much about the person behind that. And it's about what they're going through in that moment. And I want to tell those stories. 